Hey guys, Toby Mathis here, and you're back with the Anderson Business Advisors Podcast, and I have a really good guest today named Shane Sams. First off, welcome, Shane. What's going on, Toby? It is good to see you today, man. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm walking down a library with you right now. We're going to get some books off the shelves. We're, we're, we're going to reach <laughs> right over. We're going to reach right, reach right over. over. We're going to grab, we're going to grab some ancient texts. Ancient text telling us the best side hustle gigs you can have right now. That's a, yeah, I always got to do this. This is a buddy of mine named Mario Bosner who takes photographs of libraries and, uh, and architectural work all over the country. Uh, and that's actually a photograph of Admont Abbey in, uh, in Austria. Unbelievable. Yeah. And that's it's like a painting. It's yeah, uh, people don't believe right it's now. a photo. It's actually a photo. Like if I move my head, you can actually see down the hallway. Hey, there's a hallway. Um, the floor looks like a photo, but it's the books that get you. The books look like as Leonardo da Vinci or DiCaprio or somebody painted it, whoever it was. I don't know. One oh, of those that, did, if you guys. look up here, like that, that all that painting was done by a guy who was like 80 years old. Wow. It's like Michelangelo. It's gorgeous. Anyway, I, I want to go there and stand in the middle of it and then, and then say, see, it's real. <laughs> get a photo. <laughs> there should be me like in back there, like waving. See, it's a photo. Um, and then when you move your head, you'll be there. It'll be good. <laughs> That's about right. All right. So we're going to hit the, uh, the best side gig you guys can enter into right now. And I'm just saying this cause I work with people all over the country and all over the world. Uh, Hey, inflation is a real thing. They, uh, printed a lot of money during COVID and it's had a pretty negative impact on a lot of people's lives. So the things that tend to get buoyed when, uh, inflation goes up are businesses, things that have growth. Um, and assets, they get pushed up too, like your, your real estate. So it's the main drivers are inflation and growth in any, uh, in any business. So, uh, we want to have you in something where we can help you get that income going. Uh, I'm a tax attorney by trade. So all I do is I look at businesses all over the place and I look at things that people are investing in and I pick the best ones because I can actually see the results And Shane here happens to be very focused in one area. I'll let him do the introduction on it. Uh, but this is something anybody could do. If you have a passion about something, you can turn it into a business. And this is a great way to make money. And once you do it, the beautiful part is that it's a residual model so that it's put a little energy in the beginning, let it start to compound. And I'm sure Shane, you got a million stories because I know you've been doing this, but, uh, why yeah. don't you start by telling them who you are and how you got into and how you got into business. Sure, man. My name is Shane Sams. I have a company called Flipped Lifestyle, flipplifestyle.com. And what we do is we teach people how to start uh, online businesses based on memberships and content. Now, I have not always been an entrepreneur. I used to be a school teacher in Southeast Kentucky. And a lot of different things happened uh, along the way that made me realize I had no control over my life. Like I figured out that a W-2 employee becomes a W-2 employee because they control your time. And I was like, this is not good. Someone owns me, man. They literally own all my time. And I started looking for other things to do. And I didn't have money to like start a business. My wife and I started doing, looking for all kinds of things. We were going to start a clothing store at one time, but I did the math on it. And it was going to be like 10 grand, 20 grand. 30. It was just going to be so much money to start a clothing store. Uh, I'm not a very good cook, but we're like, can we open a pizza restaurant? And it's like, that's like 500 grand to open a pizza restaurant. <laughs> it's, it's like crazy. Like the, when you look at all the costs. The ain't stuff, cheap. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man, not at all, dude. And the dish, everything back there, man, like the people. And uh, so we had to find something else. And I actually stumbled across uh, the knowledge industry um, where people are literally taking things that they know and they're either doing coaching or consulting or they're they're taking those things and putting them online and people can buy them all over the Internet. And I, start, and I was thinking to myself, like, there's 8 billion people on the planet. Like, I only need like 50 to 100 every month to buy something from me. And I'm probably good. I could replace my teaching salary. So my wife and I started looking for ideas. Um, we came up with two ideas in the beginning, and these are kind of both a little off the wall. Our first idea was this website called elementarylibrarian.com. My wife was a librarian, and we thought, hey, wait a minute. Teachers hate lesson planning. Let's make the lessons for them. They'll pay us every month to get access to them. And we built this business, and lo and behold, we ended up having like hundreds of librarians like, join us. If I us. look at that, would I still be able to see it? Yeah. Yeah, elementarylibrarian.com is there, but we no longer own it. We actually sold that on a contract for over a million dollars. Uh, we sold it. It got big enough where it was an it was an asset we sold oh back gosh, in 2017. There yeah, there it is. <laughs> library yeah, so that's elementary lib library lesson plans. Yeah. Well, see what people don't realize is if you can solve a problem, then people will pay you for the solution. And elementary librarians have a really unique problem of all teachers. They have to teach six classes a day, not six classes like the same lesson every time, like a history teacher. 
they have to teach first grade and first period, second grade, third grade, fourth. They have to prep for every one of those things. So our tagline was never plan a lesson again, go home and hang out with your kids. And like, so that was our value proposition, man, sure. you know? And like, so it really went over well. We repeated that with another website called ushistoryteachers.com um, and started selling lesson plans to teachers. And then I, my passion though, at the time, dude, I was a football coach. I loved football. I specifically loved the three, five, three defense. Nobody knows what that is, but I loved it. Okay. And I, I wasn't like a Super Bowl state championship I coach. But I, thought, you know, I could see you as a linebacker. Oh yeah. I was outside linebacker. I was yep. fullback outside linebacker. I was too slow to play anything else, but I could, I could run around the box, you know, a little bit. Uh -huh. And uh, so I started, I, I started my career as a football coach. Oh, and 10, my first year as a head coach, I lost every game, Toby, everyone. But we eventually got pretty good, and my team started winning seasons almost every year. We never, like, went to state or anything. But I was like, wow, we win more than we lose. We go home happy more Friday nights than not, you know? Mm -hmm. So I started selling my playbooks to coaches. I was like, my, 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 my whole pitch on that one was, are you sick of going, getting up every Saturday miserable because you, you're 2-8, and eight, you're 3-7, and seven, whatever? I ain't here to help you win a state championship, but I can get you to 500. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole pitch. And, dude, I freaking sold, like, seven grand on that uh, – uh, playbook the first time I ever did it. And I even had like a clinic. I hosted a clinic myself out in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So we started just doing anything we knew about that we thought we could help people with. We turned it into online businesses and that's how we were able to quit our teaching jobs, become entrepreneurs. It, it, it sounds kind of like Snapple. You remember like they were like, we're number three. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like hundred percent dude. Yeah. We're not going to be Coke or Pepsi, but we're number three. We own that's that. That's exactly right, job. man. hundred percent dude. I, I just, I just wanted people, I, my, I wanted to just wake up happy more Friday nights than not. Like if I could, if I get six and four, then I was only miserable four times. And that was, that was my promise to you. You could be miserable less. <laughs> It worked though. It's all pretty so uh, let, let's digest this a little bit. So you set up businesses where people would go in and what they subscribe and you'd send them playbooks and stuff. Yep. Yeah. So basically how it works is um, there's three tiers to it. So you set up a membership site, let's say it's 50 bucks a month or whatever inside your membership site, you're going to do three things. You're going to make uh, courses where people can go in and learn things that you that stuff that you say all the time, they can go mm -hmm. watch like a training. So you could, the courses inside my football coaching website were how to install the defense to your team, like with mm -hmm. the practice scripts and stuff. Um, and then the next thing you set up is a community where people can talk to each other. And all of this is done like in a simple platform that does all this for you, but these are just the components. So now you create this energy in the community. It's not all based on you. They can talk to each other. And then if you want to, you can have higher levels of services. Like you can actually coach people one-on-one. -on -one. You can build a coaching team or you could do what we did. Like I actually had a, where people could buy these live events where we would go and do a clinic in person mm -hmm. and those were expensive. So those three elements kind of make up the membership model. And, you know, the goal is, you know, if you get a hundred people pay you 50 bucks, that's 60 extra thousand dollars a year. You know, if you do that. 200 you can get it to ten thousand dollars a month and, so and this is the mission. tax attorney side of me that immediately says structure that business because chances are you're incurring a whole bunch of expenses that your employer's not reimbursing everything from home offices now cell phone computer oh, yeah. everything and if you can make it if you can use it in your business the business can reimburse you if, it, if it's the right type of business so i'm just yeah yeah, yeah for sure shameless plug is structure it right so it's tax-free money in a, you know, exactly. so you can make $5,000 a month. And if we, and if we can write it all off, then that's more like making 7,500 at a job. Um, yeah. Goes a long way. So, so how much did it cost you to actually put one of these businesses together? Like, it sounds like it just took time, but you used a platform yeah. and you did some things like what did it end up costing you? It, it was, it was a lot different back then because you had to like work with a, a server host company and like, you know, you can get, I mean, you can still get server hosting like really, really super cheap, like 25 to 50 bucks a month, probably for, a, you know, your own server and things like that. But like, mm -hmm. there was a lot of like things you had to duct tape together. Now I'd say in the beginning we were spending maybe $500 a month on the business itself. That's not not before we started marketing, before we did anything. That's like opening the doors kind of money, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's programs, like we use a platform called Kajabi. And what Kajabi does is it has all this stuff built into it. You can build your website on it. You can build your sales funnels on it. You can do all your marketing. It hosts your contacts. It hosts your products. You just sell everything through this one platform. And that can range you anywhere now from 150 bucks a month to maybe 600 bucks a month, depending on what you have. 
Um, but these platforms are all in one platforms. They literally are all you need. Like as long as you can wow. take a payment, host your products and services, uh, you know, do your email marketing, build your website where people can come to it. Social media accounts are basically, you know, free to set up until you start running ads on them. Right. So yeah, like all this stuff can be set up probably for 500 bucks a month or less. Yeah. I'm looking at this. The best place for creators to make money. Kajabi is. They've got a low tier too. I think they've got one that's like a couple hundred bucks a month for one site or something. We got wow. multiple sites on ours. So we do I like 500 pricing of it. But again, this is, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They have stuff that's a hundred. Yeah. And there's lots of platforms like this shame. You know, I, I shamelessly plug Kajabi because we use it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like all these new platforms have just consolidated everything. People see these all the time on TV too, like Squarespace and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like these platforms do everything you need them to do to make money. You just got to put in the time and the investment and then come up with a great idea that you can take to the marketplace where you can solve a problem for somebody. All right. Let's talk about that. So you've already hit two. So here you are, you're a school teacher and you and your wife are like, you know what? Uh, I don't want to be beholden to have to work all the time. And uh, was it, was yeah. there an, was there something that like an impetus that said like, this is my, this was an incident that made me realize this was not the path yeah. I should be going down when it, when it came just to being a public school teacher. Yeah, there was. Um, long story short, one day we figured out my son. Was, my son told me one day, you know, I took my kids to daycare every single day, and you know, I was dropping my kid off one day, and he told me that one of the ladies in his daycare center scared him, and he did. And I was asking him why, and he started saying some things that were a little off, and I was like, well, I got to figure out what's going on here, but I didn't have like enough information to go burn down daycare mm -hmm. centers. You know what I'm saying? So I actually. Um, I, the day had kind of already started. I was running behind for school, so I couldn't get a sub. And my boss told me that because I'd, I'd taken Isaac somewhere else, my son somewhere else. So he was out of that situation, but I needed to go and like figure this out. And my boss basically told me that, you know, she knew my son needed me, but my job needed me too. And I'd have to handle my personal problems after work. Yep. And that, that was the, that was the incident that like, I, in that moment, I realized like, well, this person really thinks they own me because they signed my paychecks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was what, that was the impetus for making me go down this rabbit hole. Is that what you're asking? Is that what you're yeah, asking? That's exactly what I'm asking. Cause usually there's a moment. Yeah, some people say yeah. there's a calling. Some people say, you know, they'll, they had an epiphany. Some people will say they just had this compulsion. Like they just feel like they need to share something or they wanted to, they knew they were on the wrong path. And I talk about yeah. with entrepreneurs all the time. And especially wealthy people, wealthy people oftentimes feel it's almost compulsion to do something. And yeah. uh, it sounds like you had a realization. It was an obsession at that point to get yeah, out okay. of that situation. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it, it became, I, I could not think, I could not eat, I could not drink. I just started going all in on learning everything Which, I could. But back then, nobody taught you how to do it. You just had to like read blog articles and try to guess what other people were figuring out. Um, cause the, the industry wasn't as developed as it is now, you know, but it became an obsession to quit that job and, and work for myself. W was your son okay? Like he got him out of that situation or was he it was, he was, yeah, we found there was a lot of stuff going on that daycare center actually ended up getting shut down because the state investigated it. Um, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of other crap going on in there. Just, they were just being like, they were just violently punishing kids. It was pretty terrible. Um, in a lot of ways, it was more from ignorance, I think, than malice when we look back at it in hindsight. But, uh, yeah, my son, he's good now. He, um, you know, of course there was some trauma, but we went to counseling and, you know, have worked through that. But thank God that you did that. There's other kids. parents that probably went to their job and they said, Hey, you don't do it. You, you, did you tell your school to, to, to stuff it? Is that what you did? Just kind of. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I actually left. Yep. I said, Nope, that's not going to happen. Took off and, uh, just went home that day and said, uh, you know, we investigated the situation. I actually, uh, I, a couple times, there was two family incidents that happened in that school where I got wrote up for leaving because one of them was after school. I left like before I was time to go and my school was already over, but they wrote me up twice. And I was like, this is stupid, man. I don't need to answer to these people. If I can, All just right. go home I'm going to have to take a time out here. Hey guys, if you're out there listening, would you have told your boss to stuff it? If you were in Shane's situation, put it in the comments, just say, yes, I would. Or I was in it and I didn't, and I regret it. Or, no, I, I, you know, you, you should just work for your employer and it doesn't matter what's going on. Your personal stuff is on, on your, and job. I don't want anybody to think I felt like a superhero, Toby. I, I was driving home, probably like scary. literally scared to death. Yeah. yeah, man. Scared to death. Cause I mean, listen, I only made like $2,500 a month, but guess what? That was half my income with my wife and we had bills and a mortgage. So like if I'd gotten fired, 
it could have got ugly really, really fast. I had no savings. I was I, living paycheck to paycheck. I'm going to say you were a superhero in doing that because people just I appreciate the it. sacrifice for, for, for the kids. All right. So what did you do? Oh, what did I do? When I, the, when I got home, I, the, I didn't I didn't start online business right away. I just told my, my wife I needed to figure out something. It probably took me, it was four or five more months before I found online business through a podcast. You know what I'm saying? And I remember the first thing I did, I, this is the first thing I did. I said, I know I'm going to have to buy something to learn how to do this. And uh, so I was, and I, I, everyone kept talking about email marketing and how you had to get people's email address and then you could sell them stuff. So I had a, uh, uh, a yard sale. I had a, like two or three weeks in a row. I sold everything I could find, anything that wasn't bolted down, man. I started selling and I started collecting my money up. I was selling my collectibles that I'd had my whole life, autographed books from authors who were dead, like whatever I could do, I could, I could sell. And I used that initial money to buy my first training, um, to learn how to do the marketing side, learn how to do email marketing, and then to buy my first hosting package right? To get my website up there. Then I tried like three or four websites. And I'm going to tell everybody out there, you've got to go through a couple ideas before you find the one that works. I hope mm -hmm. the first one's a home run, but th it takes trial and error. So my first three ideas were terrible ideas. They just flunked and crashed and like didn't even do anything. So my wife's getting frustrated at this point. You know what I'm saying? And uh, finally, I started a blog it was a dad blog called Toddler Apocalypse. Have I ever told you this? I don't know if I've ever told no, you this. No, yeah, this is first time. I, yeah, to, it was called Toddler Apocalypse. And I was doing it wrong at the time. I didn't know about the content strategy method. I was, I was trying to get people to come to my blog and read it and click on ads. So Google ads and stuff like that. And you get like a commission if they click it. And uh, one night I was watching the stats and somebody clicked an ad and I made 11 cents, like a dime and a penny. And I was like, money, I did it. I made something, <laughs> money came back. And that's when my wife was like, hey, wait a minute. This is real? You actually made any money online? Like I, that, that's not even enough money to get like the shopping cart out at Aldi. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's money. It was a proof of purchase, proof of concept. Yeah. And um, that's when we went back to the drawing board and we started buying courses and stuff like to try to learn how to make courses and how to lead communities and do stuff like that. It may be 11 cents, but it's my 11 cents and I earned That's exactly it. right, man. That's yeah. my 11 cents. I, I wish I, I wish I actually had the physical. I wish I should have went to the bank when it, and I should have deposited it and got a dime and a penny out and framed it. That's what I should have done. <laughs> Everybody else makes it their <laughs> first dollar. And, you know, my no first dime and penny. penny dime. I was just thinking math. I was like, there's 8 billion people. What if I had 20,000 people give me 11 cents? That might work. <laughs> so. It's all about scale, right? So, so, yeah, so you went down this path, but it sounds like you had like, the elementary school librarian. Like yeah. I'm looking at that site now. That looks pretty, that, that looks nice, but you sold that puppy for a million bucks. Yeah. Yep. It was 1.1 million, 800,000 in cash, I believe is what it was. And you know, that was crazy. Wow. That was unbelievable. Cause I mean, it, the reason they liked it is because this, uh, it was recurring revenue, you know? And of course, recurring revenue doesn't mean, you know, it's not like stocks or real estate where you set it in there forever. All money must be managed, right? Like you're going to have to do marketing to replace mm -hmm. churn and people that come in and out. But what was cool about elementarylibrarian.com was people would buy it and, you know, you school years nine, 10 months. So, I mean, you're going to get nine, 10 months retention. People would stay year after year. So you had this nice little recurring revenue pot and this company came in and they actually were buying up education uh, websites like this to build like a big conglomerate or something. I don't know what they were doing. And, um, but they would buy it and then they would make money off of it. I'm sure they flipped it later. I think they've sold it twice. I think that's been sold again, actually, uh, last I heard. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's what really opened my eyes to what was possible with online business, because I'm not saying everybody's going to go sell anything for a million dollars or five hundred thousand or twenty dollars. I don't know what you're going to do, but like you are building a thing that you can build that other people would want that thing. And if you ever get sick of running it, you can let it go. We've had a lot of students do the same thing. I just had a uh, we just had one of our students sell a website for like seven hundred grand or something. Um, and, you know, I, I, uh, there's been a couple of our students that have sold things for way more than me. Uh, I was just talking to one of our students, his name's Jeff, and he started a similar website in geometry, like math. Mm -hmm. uh, he just kind of watched our model and went with it. And he sold his for like 2 million or something like that. Um, so, because people want those investments, dude, you know, they want that, they want that semi-passive income rolling in and they do whatever they want with it. Shane, just cause we don't have unlimited time. Yeah. 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 Tell people some of your favorite ideas that you've seen people monetize. So, let, let, so I'll, I'll tell you three ideas real quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's three categories that we have found of ideas that I teach. Um, you can make a business out of something you love, like a passion. 
You can make mm -hmm. it out of something you've learned, just knowledge you have that you can pass on to other people, or you can make it through things you've lived through. Um, so people who love things like passions, hobbies, those are great ways to start an online business. My favorite passion-based business um, is a guy named Evan Burse. He was a he was an animator at Marvel, but he was working 80 hours a week and hated his job. Hmm. So he wanted to work for himself. So we started a website called thecartoonblock.com. And the cartoon block basically is him teaching p aspiring artists how to draw superheroes. And he was able to replace his salary just with a YouTube channel and an online business teaching people how to draw cartoon characters like Batman and Superman. Mm -hmm. um, then there's things you've learned, like things you've just learned along the way. Like if you're educated in something, like one of my favorite stories of that is a lady named Blair Green. And uh, Blair Green has a, she was a pharmacist and she uh, had her own little pharmacy. And I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the big boxes are killing the local pharmacies, right? They're just commoditizing pharmacies into like, you know, the stores. So she figured out, she learned how in her business to do services and do other things that other pharmacists weren't doing to keep it business and to make it really super profitable. So she started coaching pharmacists. She just took her pharmacy degree and instead of doing her own pharmacy, she started teaching pharmacists how to do this stuff. And that turned into a huge business. She was doing like 40, 50 grand a month at one point, just uh, with a, I think the membership wow. was like 197 a month, like crazy money. Mm -hmm. And then the things you've lived through, these can be anything like, you know, we had a lady named Robin Fern. And uh, she came in and she had survived breast cancer, but she had survivor's guilt. And it took her like five years of depression to get her life back of all the mm -hmm. friends that she had lost along the way. So she started a community coaching women who were survivors of breast cancer to help them get their life back faster. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. So these loved, learned, lived categories, if you can just sit and brainstorm them, like many of those have ideas that you can use to start an online business on because if you have ever solved a problem in any of those categories for yourself, you can go and teach other people how to solve that problem. And once you solve that problem, people can pay you for it. The bigger the problem, the more it's going to generate, obviously. But, exactly. But yeah. uh, like, what's typical? Like, is everybody charging 100 bucks a month? Is it 30 bucks? Is it 10? Is it? It's, it's based on the person. It's based on the avatar. Like, it's like, for example, you know, if I'm selling to school teachers, there's going to be a there's going to be a ceiling on what you can charge a school teacher, mm -hmm. fifty to a hundred dollars probably. If I'm doing a pharmacist, if I'm selling ph stuff to pharmacists, they're going to have more disposable income. Mm -hmm. But the goal is not just to charge a lot. It's not like that. That's a different strategy because that's more high ticket. The yeah. goal with this model is go wide. Go yeah. find go find two hundred people to give you fifty bucks. They're out there. You know what I'm saying? If there's a hundred thousand people in an audience, there's two hundred of them that are probably buy your stuff. You just got to get mm -hmm. your stuff in front of them. And then that's the, that's the mission is to go wide. I had a guy last night, he's got a website. I can't remember what it's about, but he's charging like five bucks and he just hit 50 people in his first couple of weeks. So like, he's just, he wants to, he wants to go get as many wide as he can get, create a few thousand extra dollars a month. He's not trying to quit his job and just do it that way. Yeah. Seems really, really What's margin from inflation margin. That's what we're looking for. And uh, it seems like anybody could do it. Is that a fair assessment? Like, if, hey, and you don't know what's going to work unless you go out there and start trying. So, exactly. Like yeah. seen we've seen such ideas. crazy ideas. Yeah. Yeah. We've say. seen crazy ideas work, man. Like, you know, people come in and they're like, I mean, there is a learning curve. I don't want to ever, it's simple, not easy. Let's, let's keep it that way. Um, but we've seen crazy ideas work, man. I've had two, the two craziest ideas I've ever seen is this guy named Kenny Troiano who loves backyard chickens. He raises chickens. And uh, he's like, I think I can start. Yeah, man. See, like there's people, there I didn't know this is a thing. Like people do this, especially in like mm. urban areas. Like, yeah. Yep. So he's like, I want to start a podcast about raising and breeding chickens and then start a membership about chickens. You think people do that? And uh, so he started that and he ended, he's over 200 members or something like that in his membership, just paying him every single month. He's making six figures a year just arguing with people about chickens. And then this is a long story, but I'll tell you the short version of it. Then this one lady came in and her name was Teresa Perleyberg. And she started a website, I think it's called Bear Creek Felting is what it's called. So she starts this business Bear where, Bear, 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 something like that. I, I, I might be wrong on that. I'm I'm pretty look, sure it's Bear, you, look up you, Teresa you. Perleyberg and you'll find her. But, uh, but what she did, what she said, I love to do this activity. It's a craft and it's called needle felting. And I needle felt things into stuffed animals. And I also shear the sheep and I dye the wool. It's like farm to table crafting. You know what I'm saying? Is she in North Dakota right, or something? North Dakota. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She has, a, she has an awesome. She, there you go. And she's, she's, she's got a YouTube channel called YouTube, like E W E like, cause that's a sheep. Yeah. And, uh, but she started and she was like, do you think other people might want to be like a farm to table crafter? 
And I was like, that's, I don't even know what this is. This makes no sense, but you like it. And I bet you're not like the only person on earth that does this. Like, so other people do needle felting. So she starts this website where she's teaching people just with courses in a membership, how to build these stuffed animals. And this thing blows up. She ends up getting like 400 members, like making like, you know, just buku bucks off this thing. And then it got there. The members got it so big. They wanted her to supply them with the wool. So she started supplying them with a subscription box to get them the wool. And then they were, she was making so much money and so many packages. She got a partner with more sheep so they could get more wool. And then they went and bought an old schoolhouse. They invested in real estate and they turned it into an event sitter. So now people fly there to do these like conferences where they get to shear sheep and dye wool and like sew Mm -hmm. things into like stuffed animals. So, I mean, that's the, that's probably the weirdest idea I've ever heard. And like if, if that one works, probably, yeah, anybody can come up with an idea that can, can make some money online. And it depends how much also too, like I always, these stories of these people who quit their jobs and things are great, but, but I always tell people, you know, I've got friends and family and people I've helped who are just, they wouldn't made enough money to pay their mortgage. And they're, they have so much breathing room now with how much everything costs and how much everything is like, it's just, what are your goals? You can probably achieve it if you put the work in up front in a online business of some kind. This is wild because I'm looking at her site and there's a zebra on there. And I thought it was a photo of a zebra, but it looks like it's something they felted. She felted, felted that together. Zebra. Yeah. Yeah. She felted, a felted that zebra. Together. She calls yeah. them statues, though. She gets mad at me when I call them stuffed animals. But I like, the, I think the story sounds funnier when I say stuffed animals, but she calls them, you apparently needle felt. When you needle felt, it's a statue, not a stuffed animal. All so right. So I it's, got it's, your back. But it's really cool. <laughs> So there's all yeah, these man. great ideas. People can go out there. So, 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 so here's my thing, guys. Uh, two ways to combat inflation. You know, you go out there and you invest in things or you create additional income that's going to grow your income beyond what uh, inflation's doing. Uh, and what I've seen is uh, wages aren't keeping up with inflation. Uh, the way the government tracks mm-hmm. inflation tends to be, you know, hot garbage. We know what things are up, you know, when the real estate market's up 30%, 40%. Over a short period of time, that's the inflation, right? All the costs are up, taxes are up, everything's up, right? So uh, the, the, what we can do to combat it is make sure that we have other income streams and or yeah, we're going to have to cut our expenses. And I think a lot of us are realizing cutting expenses isn't realistic because inflation's driving everything. Everything's more expensive. So what are you going to do? You Okay, maybe I'll just throw that cell phone away. I guess I don't need it anymore or I can't afford it. Or you go out and you create another income stream. And so I really, I'm, I'm appreciative of you coming in and sharing this because I always learn something talking with you, Shane, because you help so many people take their yeah, passions man. and put it into something that uh, can help them. And you said something earlier, you know, here's a guy that he, he, 50 people at $5 a month. Okay. 250 bucks. What would that do for you? Some of these Shoot people, you, man. yeah, some of these people, that's, that's a week of groceries for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Come on, dude. That, it, and it's a great vacation a year, or it's my kid can now go to the school, or it's yeah a car that operates and runs that doesn't my kid doesn't have anxiety. to skip the field trip, whatever, dude. You know, you're talking. I've never I get don't get into this, but uh, younger Toby uh, was on the uh, Teams USA and a Moscow Cup, twenty five hundred dollar ticket. Uh, I couldn't afford it. Uh, yeah. as a, as a young <laughs> kid, you know, oh, so you didn't get to go. You didn't get to, didn't you didn't get, get to go. I couldn't afford the plane ticket to get me over there. Yeah. It was just silly. There you go. And man. everybody thinks, Oh, yeah, but the teams, you know, all these us teams and stuff. I was, I was a good soccer player. That's what sent me to school, uh, to college, but it was, I was in high school and we didn't have a ton of money and little things like that were actually big. Getting yourself from point A to point B was actually a struggle. And so, yeah. uh, I, yeah, if you can help somebody do a little bit, even just a little bit, it could be hundreds yeah. of dollars. It could have a pretty dramatic impact. You get it to thousands of dollars, it can have a significant impact. And then if you do like you did with your wife and you have a million dollars fall out of the sky because of something you created, yep, it can have a nice life impact. Yeah, man. Shoot shot, dude. It can let you fund your dreams and fuel your future. And there's, there's just so many benefits of it. Like from the, we get caught up in the big numbers, I think, as entrepreneurs. But like the biggest difference most people tell me is, I get to do what I want every day. Like, you know, when we see people that have that extra money or, or they get to say, screw you to that job, that boss, cause they're not worried about it. Cause they got this other thing on the side. So it gives you a little financial freedom, little, little space to work in the world. 
love it and i appreciate you coming on if somebody wants to get a hold of you i mean i can put a link down in the show notes and get a hold of you but what, what's the first step that they should take if they're interested yeah, the in, first in, in doing it? the yeah the first step should always be to uh find your idea and uh, we have a little training that people can watch it's a flip lifestyle.com slash idea flip lifestyle so it's a more expanded version of what i was just talking about so mm -hmm. people want to go just like, you know, it's a name and an email, you give it to us, we send you a video and you can sit there and watch that and maybe sit and brainstorm an idea this weekend that could go out, make you some money online. Who knows? All right. And folks, if you think, if you know somebody and you're like, man, this would be perfect for him. I already have, I have a buddy raises chickens, he, 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 but he raises some food chickens. He raises about 500 a year. And I keep like, dude, you know, all you need to do is get subscribers to th that mm -hmm. even just want your chicken like hey you want like yeah. no hormones no like natural chicken you could probably go that route um there but if you know of anybody that you say like hey this would be perfect for them just forward this to them and we appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the channel obviously that helps our analytics but on this topic especially if you know anybody that just needs that little bit of a flick in the eye or a flick in the butt and uh, a little motivation and uh this, this certainly helps when you hear that other people have done it and done it successfully. I'm talking to a guy that literally turned his life around. Uh, obviously, Shane, you had something that was, was, was compelling that change. Not everybody's in that situation. Uh, but sc school teacher, did your wife work too when you guys turned, did all this? Yeah, she was, an, yeah, I was a U.S. history teacher and she was an elementary school librarian and we were building it. We're, we were working full time and raising kids, working on, we were moonlighting on the internet at nighttime to build this business. Took us about a, it took us about a year because we were only able to work a couple hours a week on it. You know what I'm saying? There you go. So, but if they, if, yeah, if they can do it full time Anybody with kids, can. elementary school teacher or school, school teachers, then anybody can do it. And I can say that because. Uh, I managed to build a successful business and I can do it. Anybody, I'm pretty sure that anybody can do it. I'm, I'm dude, I'm just a dude from Kentucky, man. We're all still figuring it out. Me and you, Toby, we could probably got no business being here. Let's be realistic, man. No. If we can do it, I'm pretty sure anybody can. Yeah, that, that, that's my litmus test is like, sorry, if I could do it, then you definitely could do it because you're probably smarter than <laughs> right, I exactly. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks for coming on. And I really appreciate, appreciate it. it we'll share out your information and make sure that's easy for people to, to add another, uh, uh another side gig that can actually make them some money and it doesn't cost them an arm and a leg and uh, that they can turn into, into some profits. Have a little fun while we're doing it. Have a little fun. So you got it. Good. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.